unlike Nowruz, celebrations of a Western New Year's Eve are not a thing in Iran. Nonetheless, the resolve to prepare a traditional meal for Hausak's house guest at the time is strong. Meena, the chef de cuisine of the Darling Kitchen at Hausak, recommends some gourmet sabzi, saffron rice, and gourmet badam jhun for this global community style feast. Tunes of sitar emerges from the basement where Babak, one half of the Hausak duo, is tucked into a Persian kursi, a common Iranian low table with a heater underneath a sizable futon. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. The names Iran and Persia are always used interchangeably and understandably so with reference to the Persian Empire, Zoroastrianism and a long history of second wave civilization. While some provinces of Iran each command their own historical importance, Pasargad or Fars province is home to what the Greeks referred to as the city of Persians or Perspolis. Located approximately 50 kilometers away from the nearest city of Shiraz, Perspolis is what remains today of the ceremonial capital of the formidable Archimedes Empire. The sheer size of the complex, the sculpted detail of each rock, stairway and the stepping stone is something one can only recognize and appreciate in person. Everything else is just a rendition. A short hike up the periphery of this complex and you can soak in not only the entirety of the ruins but also get a panoramic view of the mountain belt against the gorgeous clear blue sky. Through its complex cultural past and wave-making political climate, Iran's architecture has achieved its own distinct dialect that reflects across its palaces, mosques and even churches. The Nasrul Mulk Mosque, while appearing like a regular place of worship from a distance, is anything but that. As you draw closer and walk around the courtyard, Every painted tile and subtle detail are what up with the pink mosque due to the generous use of the color. But if one is to step inside, the coupling of the stained glass windows and the morning light passing through them manifests itself as a living kaleidoscope. Its patterns and colors people of bringing tranquility to even the least devout person in the world. 
while atmospheric changes and the sheer age of the structure does cause the tiles and arches to fade and crack it is heartening to see carvers modelers and artists are hard at work perched over ladders redoing each tile painting each mosaic in a well funded effort to preserve the art and architecture for posterity We spent time to renovate the uh, the house. You um, guys are from Ishwan, no. right? No. So why Ishwan? <laughs> uh, because uh, actually Ishwan is a special city, uh, and uh, also we lived in Ishwan. Um, after um, me, also um, after my university, I stayed in the city and started working, and. Uh, We had lots of friends in the city, so I went here. I stayed here in the city, and uh, Nassim, uh, because she had lots, lots of projects yeah. when she was studied at university. Mm -hmm. Babak and Nassim set up and run Houseak House, a sustainable bread and breakfast. located in the old part town of Ashfan a historic city located 6 hours away from Tehran Ashfan the once dazzling capital of ancient Persia nicknamed Nesfe Jahan or half of the world is now the third largest metropolis and home to possessing palaces a public square Naqsh-e Jahan one of the largest in the world and Siyosi Pul an iconic 33 arch bridge in what is the oldest armenian quarter of the world how important do you think is chai in iran wow <laughs> <laughs> maybe in iran people can don't have food but they cannot drink tea <laughs> uh yeah i mean it's a huge part of the culture here right Yes, of course, that's right. Uh, I think Iranian people have maybe ten time in a day to drink tea, and it is uh, big about something like this. <laughs> uh, for example, the, the young people, uh, we make tea, uh, something like puri. I don't know in English. Okay. Like a flask. Yes. Yeah. And uh, have it till end of the night. Oh. Okay. But for example, my grandma, she make tea and uh, drink it fresh, and after that, the next time they make it again, and they make it again, and they make it again. <laughs> yeah. tea or chai as it's called in iran is more than a warm brew in a cup it is a national sentiment a beacon of the ever so alive iranian spirit traditional tea houses act as communal spaces for cultural and political dialogue entertainment and even as a living heritage of the kind that leads one down the lanes of persian lineage and a glorious past Traditionally, Iranians mix one part of hot and concentrated black tea, typically Ceylon, with two parts of boiling water, nabat or rock candy made of saffron and rose water is used instead of sugar to add sweetness. Azadikan traditional tea house in Ishfahan's Naqsh-e Jahan Square is an iconic stop. Starting from its passageway. lined with dusty lamps and ye old radios to the tubular cave like hall filled with enough mementos and keepsakes of several irani generations 
everywhere you look you feel like you know this country an inch better tea houses range from the likes of azad egan ample of bells and whistles to tranquil settings spacious enough to accommodate a piscina tehran's azari tea house is an unmissable cultural melting pot held together by ceaseless flow of tea along with bamiye or pestles of piping hot dizzy but more notable are the musical acts that grace its deep heart like room where people clap and rejoice to the tunes of santur played by maestros nation governed by a president supreme leader their associates most of whom are men women represent a very small piece of the pie women can drive cars but not bikes or scooters they are looked down upon as unladylike when stepping outside a head scarf is a must Although the boundaries of head coverage are constantly pushed by the ever so fashionable Iranian women under dark colored mantu or Iranian trench coats capes and jackets that cover feminine contours can be the actual outfit the rules are tightened in and around places of religious significance with chador an extremely long all encompassing cloak taking center stage the stringency of the scarf is it to avoid attention from the opposite sex or does it end up piquing the male gaze that much more as a male i wasn't subjected to this but it was very much palpable in the air that the women of iran pick face and fight the battles that will allow them access to their fundamental rights I've been spending my time most likely last three years more in Iran because of the, the type of dog rescue I do. I have a little sanctuary that I try to rescue dogs and help them uh, because there is no animal right. Uh, so there, there are people like me trying to do the right things, and it's not very easy. Mariam Talai, a fierce track rider. and an even fiercer women's rights advocate and animal activist is constantly campaigning for women's rights whether it's for participation in motorcycle track racing or other matters of public interest she also dedicates a great deal of time and energy in running a dog rescue and rehabilitation center which in iran is no easy feat since for those who don't know dogs as house pets are condemned in the islamic republic of iran Iran changed in many ways since the time I was growing up. It's many ways good, um, especially for women, because we are doing the new things like we do biking, we do uh, biggest stuff that uh, before you couldn't believe that people can do in Iran. Uh, fashion changed, uh, movie industry changed in very good way, like international. Uh, and i'm really actually happy to see this kind of movement uh, last few years uh there are stuff that it's actually bothering me um uh, that i'm hoping that in future that we can change it i hope Korma sabzi, which is a very famous food, lots of Iranian people love korma sabzi, and it would be a homemade. Has to be. Yes, and also rice, rice with saffron. 
Yeah. Está <laughs> diga. This Kurdish gentleman is saying this, these Turkmen's tent for the entrance. From one side, it has a different design, and outside has different designs. So when we are upstairs, I will explain to you how they are woven. Cut. I mean, internet Wali Ansari is widely lauded on the internet as the guide and host for the northeastern city of Mashhad. His nonchalant, informative, warm and affordable homestay in the heart of the city comes recommended in every guidebook of Iran. A fact verified by his eponymous street sign at the corner of the alley by his home. This is called Four Season Design Kurdish Kilim. Kilim means carpet with no pile. So this has four seasons. This was woven by the Kurdish nomads of this province, yeah, near Buchan, Buchan area. In this province, you can find Baluchi rugs, which they are dark colors. And then you have Kurdish rugs. And then we have these double face silk carpets. This is a double face Turkmen carpets. Work wise, Wali is learnt enough to be attributed as an expert on Persian rugs. He's well versed in the genesis, fabric, stitching techniques and most importantly methods of carpet repair. If you remember, I told you about nomadic rugs yeah. of this province. I forgot to tell you that in, there are, in towns of these province, such as Mashal, Pojnor, uh, Ayen, and then in these towns like Kashmir, they make urban carpets. The urban carpets are usually uh, different from nomadic. The nomadic rugs are usually woven by these nomadic people. There is no designer who draws the design. There is no uh, wool spinner who spins the wool. And then there is no uh, someone who dyes the, the wool, usually the nomads, they dye the wool themselves. They spin their wool by hand themselves. The design, they receive it from their family, so the design is uh, done by their heart. While the city that Wali belongs to, Mashhad, is known to everyone as the holiest spot in Iran. Due to the residence of Imam Reza Shrine, it is also the center of Iran's world-renowned carpet industry. Particularly known for its nomadic rugs, with aesthetic influences going back to prehistoric times. Unparalleled craftsmanship from Kurdistan and pockets of Afghanistan. We are still a few hours away till the clock strikes 12 and the aroma of rich stew, fragrant rice and gourmet sabzi spreads into Hauzak's courtyard. Hauzak's plates of food on this chilly evening bear the inimitable signatures of people who gave that extra bit to lay down this binding meal. 
people who can be only convicted of caring too much the night gets chillier with a collective admiration of hafiz's poetry tapping our souls gently something that they believed uh is that the Iranian people uh um, they're so kind and they really love to have relation with the people in all over the world right that's true yeah we hope that uh, see lots of people in our country and uh, Also, we hope to go to your country and the other country and all over the world and uh, visit and uh, you know, um, I think that the life is too short, so it's better to be friends with each other. meals they can bind you the way a conversation cannot or start conversations where there were none they forge an intimacy as if the person across from you at the table was not a stranger at all but a long lost friend a few thousand miles away from family but i was right at home and not cold at all <laughs>